As we mentioned here in the bulletin and as we mentioned in the prayers, we are celebrating Easter clear up to Pentecost. We're going to play like the big churches do, the churches that follow lectionaries and all the, the, the liturgical things. We aren't doing anything any differently other than this is the fifth Sunday of Easter. Then there are two more, and then we have Pentecost Sunday. A week from this, or two weeks from today, Brother Spike Wright's going to be bringing the sermon on the 20th, whatever that Sunday is, two weeks from today. 21st, thank you, Spike. And then hopefully I've got to confirm Bill will be back. Bill McDonald will be back on the 28th, and that will be Pentecost Sunday, and that will wrap up our celebration of Easter 2003. As we gather today on this fifth Sunday, I want to, everyone seems to say, I couldn't find any hymns. Shirley said, our hymnal doesn't have any hymns that fit this, this, this theme. And Diana said she had a challenge with it too. But it comes from a little verse in the book of Ephesians, which is one of those small ones in, the, in there in the letter of Paul, Paul, Paul's letters, excuse me. The tenth verse of this second chapter, I'd like to read that to you first. This is where Paul is talking about works. Works and faith are real debatable issues in the time of the New Testament because there were those who thought faith was all of it. There were those who thought works were all of it. And then there were those who tried to mingle them. This was really raged at that time. It's not so much now. We don't put it right on our front burner, but it was important then, still important now. Ephesians 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now that's a kind of a strange phraseology there, that we should walk in them. Other translations translate it differently. I have seen it translated prepared beforehand that we should do the good works. Any way you say it, it means the same thing, that these good works have been prepared, that we should walk in them, finding them and making that decision, then becomes our responsibility. The age-old question across eons of time has been, what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? We say that we are followers. We could go around with the folks in this room, those of you out there in, in uh, video land, and ask that question of each person. What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? And I expect that we would find that there would be different answers from each person. The theme would be the same, but the phraseology, well, what, what, how, why are you a follower of Jesus? How did you get to be a follower of Jesus? What does it mean? Across the years that I've been asking myself this question and asking congregations that question, I don't come up with a definitive answer other than to say that it is following Jesus means we take what he said, what he did, and try to translate it into good works, good deeds in our lives. How else can there be? What else can there be besides that to be a follower of Jesus? Yes, we can have faith. <laughs> Welcome back, Cameron. <laughs> your, your phone's off and it's sending you a message. There's the answer right there. <laughs> Maybe it's answering the question right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cameron's finished up her first year at UK and now her phone's talking to her. So I don't know. <laughs> And there's a lot of things that go on in, in the first year of college, and you find out when your phone talks to you. But this challenge of how to follow Jesus, what do we do to be a follower of Jesus? I mentioned just earlier that the, the debate between works and faith. The, God, the little book of James, James, the brother of Jesus. We studied James a couple of summers back in Seekers, and it was a very interesting study to see how James, the brother of Jesus, and Paul, the disciple of Jesus that was never really officially a disciple because they didn't live at the same time, 
but that was converted, how they took the same faith but disagreed on the methodology on how to do this. James was saying, we've talked about James many times, that faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. You have to do something to show that you have that faith. Demonstrating it. Paul was big on, on he, was, he was big on, he, on works too. But he was saying that faith has got to come first. That's got to be strong. But the faith has to develop, in my opinion. This is how we become a follower. The faith has to develop into some kind of action. I had a, a member of my church in Millville. I mention Millville often because Ray McIntyre and I were both members in Millville. Someone asked the other day, when were you at Millville? I thought back, I thought, gracious sakes alive. 1979. You know, that doesn't seem like that long ago, but when you start doing the math, it seems like a pretty good length of time. A fellow was there that was a longtime friend and was a member of the church. He was his name was Charlie Lewis, and he was the uh, superintendent of one of the big distilleries at Millville in Woodford County. He used to always say, with regard to this, it's like if you're driving to church on Sunday morning, and you see someone on the side of the road that has a flat tire, and there's no one there to help them, and they're just, I don't know, maybe it's, a, maybe it's an individual, maybe it's a family, maybe it's a whoever, and you stop, pull over. We know that's dangerous. You pull over and you say to that person, you know, I, I would help you, but I've got on my good suit. I've got on my best dress, and I'm on my way to church. I would help you, but I just can't. Now, does that translate anything at all in your mind, in your epistemology in the way that you think, does that translate anything into what you think Jesus would do? Would Jesus drive on by and say, I'll be back later? Well, that was Charlie's point about this. Do you stop and fix the flat, or do you just say, I'll be back later, or maybe somebody else will stop? Story of the Good Samaritan. Story after story after story, where people who claim to have faith People who claim to have faith drove on by, walked on by on the other side of the road. Whatever it was, they just continued on in the path that they were going without stopping to help. This passage of Scripture here, this little passage, this little verse, says again, and I want to take it one line at a time, we are God's workmanship we are God's workmanship. We are created, the Bible tells us, in his image. We are created in his image. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. Now, isn't that interesting that Paul says that's what we were created for? We weren't created to go to church on Sunday morning and do nothing else. We weren't created just to talk about it. We were created to do good works. There has to be some sort of action in it. This, this is where we gather for spiritual strength. This is where we gather for fellowship. This is where we gather and draw strength from one another. But, and sometimes I feel like I say this every week, it's got to go out of here. We've got to carry those good works, those good deeds have to go beyond this door. What should we do? in the way of good works. How can they be accomplished? Well, if we don't go looking for them, they may find us. We know here, and I've mentioned this many times, that we respond well to that. How do you respond to it personally? How do you respond to it as a participating person in the life and work of a church? I heard like yesterday, I had a very nice breakfast with, with our PMI director, David, my brother, he and his wife Vicki and their daughter Lauren were in Lexington. They've been in South Carolina. They went from South Carolina to Pittsburgh to pick up Lauren and then drove back to Lexington to visit with Vicki's father. David said, when I get through with this weekend, I'm going to have 2,000 miles that I've driven. And he's one of those bullheaded people. Brother, if you're ever watching this, 
that drives it all himself. You know, he won't let Vicky drive because she says she goes too slow. And I don't guess Lauren doesn't get in the equation. But anyway, we were talking about church, how were things going and so forth. Vicky said this. Here's a statistic I had in heart that after the pandemic, church attendance dropped 30%. 30%. That's just across, that's just an average across the board. So, say we had an average of 40 prior to March of 2020. I can even do the math on that. That's 12, isn't it? <laughs> Your accountants can tell me if I did that right. Did I make that right? That's 12. So, we dropped down immediately to 28. Well, that's about where we run now. We run about 25, 26, 27, 28 in the worship service on Sunday, 30%. A lot of them, the 30%, went to the video, which is just absolutely a godsend. I imagine everyone here at one time or another has watched one or more of these services on the live stream or watched it afterwards. That was not available to you prior to Tony telling me he didn't want me to be a a television evangelist but he wanted to try it and I said no and he said yes I'm the chairman of the board we're going to try it we would never go back because those people you all you're there we've picked up people all over the country we don't have 10,000 followers but we have people who have been touched so the 30 percent that dropped off from coming to church may have picked it up here may have picked it up on the live stream how does that work to our favor of God's work? It's a piece of, it's something that we're doing to spread the word. Something that we're doing. Personally, I like to come to church. I always have. I enjoy the, I enjoy the fellowship, getting to see other people, getting to talk with other people. Two weeks ago when, when Bill was here, I watched the service. It was great. Everything went perfect. I'm looking forward, Spike, when when you're up and builds up again to watching the service again, Shirley, well, Shirley and I, whenever, after this week, it's going to be four weeks till we're back together at the same time on the same Sunday, I think. How do we spread, how do we, that's a part of the work. We use the tools we're given. We use the things that God gave us. That's what we use. If there's something that we can use that spreads the word, that's what we need to be doing. I think of the shaker maxim. As I mentioned earlier, the, the Seekers are studying the Shakers, and, and we're just one week in, and it is, usually is with Shaker topics. <laughs> we think we're going to go one or two weeks, and it just goes on and on because people just say, this is interesting. We want to talk about this. We want to know more about it. We might even take a, a, take a field trip to Shakertown, Pleasant Hill, go over and see about the place. Anyone's invited to join us. One of their maxims was to put your heart to God and your hands to work. They may have said it more eloquently than that, but that's what it meant. To put your heart to God and your hands to work. Now that played both ways. That played now with Paul and James. Put your heart to God, your faith, and to James, put your hands to work. Do something with what you're doing. John 14, I want to read this passage to you. This is 12th to the 14th verses. No wonder you couldn't find songs to fit this, Shirley. This is all over the place. No one thinks like I do, which is probably a great credit to them. But this is kind of the way Bobby's appalling. John 14, 14th chapter, verses 12 through 14. Truly, truly, Jesus said, I say to you, he who believes in me will also do the works that I do. There's the word, works. Do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do, she too, that means, because I go to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. There Jesus tells us right there. I read this 14th chapter, the first four verses. I have at every funeral I've ever conducted. Because this is the area in the Bible where Jesus is preparing the disciples that he's going to leave. I go to prepare a place for you. When, I, when your time comes, I'll be there to welcome you. 
Here we are, before he goes, to point out to us, whatever you do in my name, whatever you do in my name, she says, I will help. I will bless that. I will bless that work. In my name, we will do it. Verse, chapter 13, I want to conclude with this particular verse. I'm just going to read one verse here. Chapter 13, verse 36. This is back a little bit before this, obviously. A new commandment I give you, that you will love one another, even as I have loved you, that you may also love one another. What a commandment. What a way to say we do good works, we think good thoughts, we're positive about how we deal with one another. But then that comes down to your decision. Did everyone win something on the derby? Shirley won enough money yesterday to pay off the mortgage. <laughs> no. <laughs> she did bet two bucks for me on two fields, and I thought that was good. Uh, I thought, God, God, she got my name in there. And I, she said, I, I sent me a text. She said, I put down $2 for you on two fields. And I thought two fields was going to come through to right there at the end. That horse passed him. And uh, maybe he'll do better in a Belmont. So be sure and put down two on the Preakness in those races too. So we'll try that again. Here was here's a situation where everybody had a different opinion, didn't they? I, I mean, not everybody bet on the same horse. A lot of people did, but they were all betting on a horse race. That's what we're doing here. Life is the race. We're all betting on the hopeful outcome of that. Churchill's had a rough week. And they're going to be under a lot of investigation that in the first week of the spring meet, they have seven horses that die or have to be euthanized. That's really sad. That happened at Santa Anita, you remember, in California a few years ago. They finally had to shut the track down to find out what was going on with that. Sad situation. But all the people that have gathered here yesterday, if you watched the Derby, all these people, they'll never be back to Churchill again until next year. They are coming to Churchill for everyday races. But they all gathered in the name of the Derby. We gather in the name of Jesus Christ. They all enjoyed the fellowship, the time together. That it, it didn't accomplish maybe any great thing other than just some enjoyment and some time. We have the opportunity to gather and to have this formula that helps us to share the talents that we have been given for the glory of God. We here at Warsaw Christian Church certainly can't afford to lose 20% or 30% more of our attendance, our participation. I know that troubles folks. Folks look around and say, well, gosh, what are we going to do? Well, in part, that's up to us. How do, we, how do we reach out to other people? How do we reach out? There are different ways of worship. There are different ways to do things. We could try other things. How do we reach out? I, was, I was, had to go to the bank the other day and met with my banker for a while. Bankers like to talk. You know, if you, if you go in and they're not busy, he said, you got a few minutes to talk. I said, well, i got to pick up Susan at work. Finally, at 5 o'clock, I said, Mike, i got to go. <laughs> She's at work expecting me to be there at 5 o'clock. And we were still talking about finances and churches and everything. And he goes to a big Christian church right across the street from the bank. And he said, our attendance, our participation since COVID shot up. And I said, why? What? What's going on? He said, I don't really like it that much, but it's my church. He said, but we have smoke. We have lights that flash. We have loud guitars. We have drums. We have all of this. And people are just flocking to the place. Want to do that here? Wish I could get Barbara Newell to stay in Frank or stay in Warsaw instead of to go to Hopkinsville. She plays the drums. Find us a guitar player. Find us a smoke machine. Clark says, Dad, that's not smoke, it's mist. If it was smoke, it would everybody would end up passing out in a closed place. But that's how these folks are their their findings, this is a way to reach out to people. I don't know if it's our way. I don't know. But here Jesus tells us, do good works, do them in my name, and we'll make it happen. I hope I've gotten a message across. We have to look for that. We, have to, we cannot 
as long as I stand here, and that may be one week, maybe another year, I don't know. We don't know what time, what time is. We're not going to stop and say, oh, well, you know, we've had a good run. We've been here since 1836. We'll just kind of back it out now, you know, just let it drift away because there's a lot of churches that are closing. I mentioned that a few weeks back. We want to continue to go on with the Word of God in God's workmanship to do good works as he has prepared for us. May we pray? Our Father, we thank you for the message of these scriptures. I don't know that I've delivered it any way other than disjointed, but I think it's pretty clear. You are expecting us as your followers to have a strong faith and in that faith to provide good deeds and good works as you have offered us the opportunity. Help us to be listening. Help us to respond. In Jesus' name we ask it.